Welcome to this crash course in the Italian wine region of Basilicata. You're going to learn exactly what makes Basilicata a unique wine producing region, what types of Basilicata wines are out there, and where you should begin your journey in tasting these wines. I'm Tony Margiata. I'm a wine importer and author of Hidden Gems of Italy. My life's mission is to look for world-class artisanal wines handcrafted in small batches from Italy, many of which have been overlooked. My family's from a small village in the Molise region of Southern Italy, and I've been traveling to Italy for over 20 years, immersing myself in Italian wine, food, and culture. So where is Basilicata? Well, it's in the deep south of Italy. It's sort of pinned in between the toe and the heel of the boot. That means between Calabria and between Puglia. Uh, most of its coastal area is on the Ionian Sea in the middle, between the toe and the heel, and then a small tiny portion of it touches the Tyrrhenian Sea. So what makes Basilicata unique? Well, you can't speak about Basilicata without mentioning this city in this picture called Matera. It's an ancient city that's still occupied with inhabitants. One of the few ancient cities that have always had people still living there. It's famous for its world of caves, which you're sort of getting a vantage point of one of them right here. There's over 1,500 different caves around the city of Matera that people inhabited 9,000 years ago. And still people live in them today, and there's even hotels built into them today, which is fascinating. The name Basilicata actually was first used in the year 1175. Before that, it was called, the region was called Lucania, and that was named after the Lyci tribe that was there before even the Greeks arrived in the 7th and 8th centuries. We're talking way, way, way back in time. There was a poet from the region, his name was Leonardo Sinisgali, and he described the ancestors of this ancient Lyci tribe from Lucania in these words. He said, they live well in the shade, referring to the caves. They make their nests wherever they happen to be. Their words are few. While they work, they don't speak and they don't sing. Where there's a crowd, the Lucanian person slips away. Where there is too much noise, the Lucanian withdraws into himself. It sounds to me when I read that passage that the Lucania people kept to themselves, slightly introverted, but very hardworking and very efficient people. I'd say that's true about the Basilicata wine region today. They don't produce much wine. They don't want too much attention. But the vast majority of wine they do produce is super high quality, and it's coming from smaller artisanal vineyards. So what else? In the background of this picture, there is what's called Monte Vulture, Mount Vulture, and it's an extinct volcano whose final eruptions happened around 40,000 years ago. So it's completely extinct. It does not explode anymore. The last time was 40,000 years ago. It's lava eruptions though, blanketed the soils in the area of a very, especially there's a very important wine subregion outside of this area called Ayanico del Vulture, which is the finest red wine from the region. And the soil is extremely volcanic. And we'll talk a little bit more about this subregion in a second. So how to think about Basilicata wines, just like any other region in Italy, you should be thinking about the native grape varietals that are locally made there. And then of course, the subregions or appellations. Um, as you can see here, when we're talking about native Basilicata grapes, uh, there aren't that many. I'd say there's probably between this region and Molise, they have the least amount of native varietals as of now, as I'm recording uh, this, but that could, that could change at any point. But among the whites, um, the most popular white varietal in the region is Greco, uh, which literally means Greek, uh, referring to the Greeks having brought this white varietal, uh, probably somewhere around 600 BC. Then there's also the Malvasia Bianca di, di Basilicata. Now Malvasia, uh, like I've said in some of my other videos, is found all over Italy. Malvasia is very aromatic also in Basilicata. It's very soft, very 
easy drinking and it's also used in blends. Same thing with the Greco, but you can find some monovarietals of these two wines if you look hard enough. Then of course, if you were to taste one red wine, one red, red wine only, it's Ayanico del Vulture, which is the same grape that's grown in the Campania region, which I discussed in another video. Um, and, and so uh, the difference between Ayanico del Vulture and Ayanico from, say, from Taurasi, for example, is, um, is that um, the, the ones from Taurasi can age much longer than the ones from Vulture. But Vulture can age comfortably 10 years, whereas uh, the Taurasi Ayanico wines can age for decades. So sort of like the Ayanico from Taurasi starts to, just starts to get good at seven years old, whereas um, Ayanico del Vulture is already in its prime. So if you just wanted to know the difference. Also, uh, flavor profile, some, some small differences. Um, they're both full and robust wines. They both have red fruits, but it's really um, more of a more of a roundness for the Vulture wines. A little bit more round on the palate, and there's a little bit more of chocolate-like mineral notes coming from the um, sort of particular lava soils from that from Monte Vulture, whereas the uh, Taurasi wines uh, have more smoky, earthy notes. Um, so that's very different, smoky and earthy versus chocolate mineral, very different. And that's because the wines from Taurasi, from that area, are getting their lava volcanic soils from the uh, Mount Vesuvius um, outside the city of Naples, which is a, um, just, just a different type of volcanic soil. Um, other varietals that you'll find in Basilicata are Primitivo, San Giovese and Montepulciano. I didn't put them on the list because you should be tasting those varietals from um, uh, regions that really, really specialize in them. Not to say that uh, Primitivo is not specialized in Basilicata. There, there is. Uh, Primitivo from the ancient city of Matera is also very particular. But um, if, if, I, if I had to put you on a path to tasting strictly Basilicata wines and you don't have much time for Basilicata, these are the varietals you should be tasting. This is the wine map of Basilicata. It's very simple to learn. There's only four or five appellations. Um, the, um, the area in the northern part is, um, is where you, you're going to find the Ayanico del Vulture Superiore, which is different from, slightly different from the Ayanico del Vulture. Notice here, the Superiore is, has been given a DOCG, which is the only one in the region. And then there's the regular Ayanico del Vulture. The only difference is it's coming from the same part of Basilicata, but the Superiore has been aged longer in oak, usually two years, whereas the, uh, the regular Ayanico is one year in oak. So uh, three important appellations that you should try um, so you can get to know Basilicata is, of course, the Superiore, DOCG, the regular Ayanico del Vulture DOC. And then there's one white wine you should definitely, definitely check out, and that's the Matera Greco DOC. Uh, Matera Greco DOC is a dry white wine, fairly easy to drink, um, intense, persistent, precious smells, peaches and apricots, um, definitely worth checking out. This is the very, very first wine that you should try from Basilicata Matera Greco DOC. Goes really well with light white fishes and shellfish. And then, of course, the first red wine you already know, you should be tasting Ayanico del Vulture DOC. You won't be disappointed. And remember, make sure you subscribe to Gladiator Wine TV so you don't miss out on new videos about artisanal Italian wine, Italian wine regions, and more. And remember, great wines are not made in great numbers.